Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt, the printing nerd, and in this video I will show you how I calibrate 3D printers. So, if you plan to build a 3D printer by yourself, like a Voron, a VCBot, a Rhetoric, or even a V100 printer, this guide will help you to get the perfect print out of it. So, without further ado, let's get started. I want to begin this video by giving a shout out to Andrew Ellis. Andrew has written the best printing tuning guide out there and I personally learned a lot from him and his fantastic guide. His expertise and knowledge have been invaluable for me and for many other people out there building and tuning 3D printers. I have used Andrew's guide to calibrate my Voron 2.4 printer and my VZBot. And today we will be incorporating many parts of his guide as a reference to tune my new V100 printer construction. While going through the tuning process, I will discuss a few things that I would do differently based on my experience. However, I must empathize that Andrew has done an outstanding job on distilling all the essential informations needed to tune a printer. If you have followed Andrew's instructions as guidance during your own tuning process and found them helpful, I highly encourage you to support him with a small donation. So with that said, let's start with a small checklist to ensure that everything on the printer is wired properly. So check all the sensors like thermistors, end stops. Also check your motors that they are running in the right direction. The team behind the Clipper firmware did a great job on documenting those configuration checks and provide also tips on solutions to be able to do the first homing of your printer. I've put a link to the Clipper wiki in the video description. And also keep in mind that in the tuning process we will search for the limits of our printer. So it's important that we have greased our rods, our rails or our lead screws properly. Our first goal is to get a perfect straight print bed. Therefore we tighten all the four thumb screws to its maximum. After that we lose all the screws by turning them about four to five times in the other direction. The first step of the calibration process is to calibrate the z-axis. I'm using the paper test method to do so. Before I start I double check that the nozzle is clean since filament on the nozzle could lead to a wrong Z offset after calibration. This technique involves placing a regular piece of paper between the printer's bed and the nozzle. Then I tell the printer to move the nozzle down until I feel a small amount of friction when moving the paper back and forth under the nozzle. After that I go in tiny steps further until I'm not longer able to move the paper. Once reached that point, I save it as a new Z offset. Now that the Z offset is calibrated, let's head over to the platform calibration to make sure that we have a straight print bed. To start, we tighten all the thumb screws to its maximum. Then I move the print head to a position directly above the first thumb screw. I lower the nozzle down to the position Z equals zero, which is the calibrated position we determined earlier. However, since we tightened all the thumb screws, there should be a small gap between the nozzle and the print bed. I repeat the paper test, but this time I loosening the thumb screw until I'm not longer able to move the paper. I repeat this process clockwise for each of the remaining thumb screws on the bed. It's important to do at least two to three rounds of adjustment since tuning one thumb screw may affect the overall height of the print bed, which needs to be compensated by changing the height of the other thumb screws. Once the platform calibration is complete, I repeat the C offset calibration from step one. However, this time, when I reach the point where I can't move the paper anymore, I move the nozzle up by about 0.1 mm. The slightly adjustment should result in a gap between the nozzle and the print bed that approximately is the height of the first layer. Now that the platform has been leveled, we have to verify its alignment. To achieve this, we have to be able to print. In my case, I'm using a CHC Pro hot end with a powerful 115 watt heater cartridge, which exceeds the standard heater cartridge specification that is defined in Clipper. As soon as I would start the print, I would get high overshoots resulting in burnt filament or even a clogged nozzle. To prevent this, it's crucial to perform a PID tuning. 
By doing that, you can ensure that the hot end and the heated batch temperatures remain consistent through the whole printing process, leading to better print quality and reduces the chances of issues like temperature fluctuation or filament adhesion problems. And it tames my hot end and therefore prevents filament burning and minimizes temperature overshoots. The procedure of PID tuning is complete automated by Clipper and it takes about 5 minutes for the hot end and about 15 minutes for the print bed. When performing PID tuning, it's important to tune it at the temperature you plan to print. In my case, since my main goal is to have a fast quality printer that prints mostly PLA, I calibrate the heat bed at about 60 degree and the hot end at 205 degree. Now that we are ready to put our printer to the test, let's print a calibration tube to check the quality of our prints before and after the calibration process. As mentioned earlier, my goal is to tune the printer for quality printing at high speeds, so therefore I will use my quality profile as base with 240mm per second perimeter speed at about 14000mm per second squared acceleration. For me, it's important to do this test at the target speeds to get a feeling which parts of the printer create the biggest issues so that I can focus on them to improve the printing performance. So let's slice the cube and see how it prints. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed are those bulgy edges on the side of the cubes. I'm not sure if you can see them on camera, maybe, uh, ah yeah, um, here at the top you see them really well. Another issue are those ringing artifacts on the surfaces on the flat sides of the cube. Also there are some fallen lines at the letters X and Y. Um, yeah, but other than that it looks pretty fine. We have a good first layer and the top surface seems also fine to me. Not perfect, but uh, it's really okay for a, for a first calibration cube. And what makes me really happy are those consistent layer lines on the Z-axis. By eye, I can't see any signs of wobbling, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, I think overall it's a good baseline to start. To face this issue that causes those bulgy edges, we have to do two things. The first thing is to calibrate the extruder E-steps. This will make sure that we deliver the correct amount of plastic. To measure the E-steps, I attach a small amount of tape on the filament and then I retract 100 mm of filament at a lower speed of about 60 mm per second. Then I attach another piece of tape onto the filament and after that I remove the whole filament uh, out of the Bowden tube and spread it out on the table so that I'm able to measure it easier. As you can see, my extruder is on point, so I don't have to change anything. If that's not the case for you, then you have to recalculate your E-steps and add the new value to Clipper. You can find the formula for this in Andrew's guide. Now that our E-steps are right, it's time to calibrate Pressure Advance. Pressure Advance does two things. It reduces oozing during non-extrude moves and it reduces bulging when cornering. I will use the old tower method which is less error prone on Bowden setups. So let's have a look at my Pressure Advance towers. The first thing that I check on the tower is whenever the extruder was able to keep up with the set a Pressure Advance value. I brought you a tower as an example where this was not the case. As you can see, the print quality decreases from about a third of the tower. If this is the case for you, then you must gradually increase the run current from your extruder until you get a clean result. For me, by increasing the run current from 0.45 Ampere to 0.8 Ampere helped me to get a clean tower. Layers below the ideal pressure advance setting will have blobbing at the corners and layers above the ideal setting can lead to rounded corners and poor extrusion. Inspect the print and find the height that has the best quality corners. When found that height, double check it with the other sides. Most often there are small deviations between the corners, so after double checking it, take the lowest value 
and use the formula provided by the Clipper Wiki to calculate your new pressure advanced value. Now that pressure advanced is configured, it's time to calibrate retraction. Retraction helps to reduce stringing and oozing during travel movements. Here, it's important to calibrate speed and distance with the speed and acceleration you plan to use in your slicing profile. For me, it's 600 mm per second as speed and 40,000 mm per second squared as acceleration. Let's have a look at the finished retraction tower. As you can see, there is a bit of stringing when we are using 1 mm retraction distance and it completely disappears when using 2 mm. It's important to say that the higher acceleration we are using helps us to be able to print at lower retraction without stringing. So don't use retraction values of 5 or 6 mm for distance that were recommended by many guides out there for Bowden systems. Let's review what we've accomplished today. We aligned the print bed and set the right C offset, we calibrated the heating curves for the hot end and the print bed, we calibrated E steps, pressure advance, retraction to get rid of bulging and stringing. So let's make a cut here and have a look at the quality of our prints. As you can see, the edges of the calibration cube look way better. Here for comparisons, our first printed calibration cube. The edges are so much better on the second one. Yes, there are still visible vibration artifacts on the side surfaces and the fallen lines on the leathers are also there. So there's still a lot for us to do. But this is a story for the next video. To not miss this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. And with that said, get out of here.